This week on Awesome Cast, we got our iPhone 6s in hand. We want to let you know what we think about them so far, a couple of days in, and plus all the Google news from the announcement today and what's got us excited about phones, tablets, Chromecast, okay, maybe some of us, and more Awesome Cast. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Just a smidge. All right, that's better. Okay, go. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast two sixty eight. I'm Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to get geeky, get awesome, get techy with you here uh, with me on the line. Also from various regions of the Pittsburgh area, one down here in the South Hills from Studio B because it is rainy out. It is damn rainy out. It is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Yeah, we're under wonder if we're under flood watch till I think noon tomorrow. That's it's why, never going to stop. I'm building an ark. That's why we both got uh, houses on the top of the hill, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, that's what that's how you do it uh, around here. Uh, if, if I get flooded, we got major problems. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm right on top of that hill. I I, I know about that. I, I I come from from by the river. I know what that's like. Uh, for all my friends, not me, not me. We were always on top of the hill, but also, I don't know where he lives geographically topography, I guess more, more, more so. Uh, but he's back with us. He's a, a writer over at virtualpotholes.com. He is AJ Koptic. How you doing? Hi guys. Uh, in, in terms, I can, it's, ve- it's a very, if the Ohio river, I can, which I can see from the, my bathroom in the back of my house. Oh no. Um, if the, if listen, if the Ohio river comes high enough to get my house, Biblical things have happened, so we're okay. We're okay here. Uh, I'm li- I live in like the middle of a hill, so like there's it's there's definitely room to go up, but I'm not at the bottom of the hill either. So I think we're doing all right, everyone. Uh, we'll 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 try to make this quick. We're not. This isn't going to be quick at all, but we're going to try our best to make this quick, uh, so that we can build our arcs and float to freedom. There is a lot of stuff to go over this week, and uh, we'll get right into it here. But first, please go check out everything at AwesomeCast.net. You subscribe to this show. Check out our awesome chat interviews, including our extended conversation with our friends from Ohio Linux Fest last week um, with uh, Frank Mergy of, of uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network a few weeks ago. Pittsburgh On Demand, they're, they're becoming here nowadays, uh, and so much more. And, of course, uh, like I said, subscribe. Uh, check us out, and uh, check us out on the social media at AwesomeCast uh, on Facebook and and on uh, the uh, the Google Plus kind of sort of anybody's hanging out there, I I, I get the notifications if you want to say something. Um, so uh, communicate with us. You can also check us out on the Patreon at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Let me just double check. Nothing has snuck in there. But I believe we still have one fantastic one fa- fantastic uh, patron uh, over uh, representing Thistle C Business Development up there in Cranberry, PA. Thank you so much for your support. Please go check them out at Thistle C on the Twitters. I hope I'm doing that right off the top of my head. Uh, and thank you so much for your support. And, and if you guys want to support us, please go over there. You become our boss. You get some extra uh, extra tidbits uh, from the show. State of the May. I'm sorry. What show is this? State of the Awesome Cast once a month and uh we're working on a few other things as well uh so let's get into it with our awesome things of the week and it looks like everybody has the same awesome thing of the week so far that i'm seeing in the notes right here so should we should we just you know should we just uh go ahead and show off our wires how do we're all on the same upgrade cycle this year apparently i'm, I'm on a yearly upgrade cycle yeah. i think yeah, i am also <laughs> on the yearly on the yearly train so uh, mm. Yeah, this is this is a nice day in uh, this is a nice day in my household because uh, my wife finally gets an upgrade off of the 5s. Mm-hmm. So uh, she got her phone and then went, "Oh, this is big and nice. Mm-hmm. Why didn't Why didn't I get the six? And I'm like, "I well, because you didn't you didn't want it. I asked you if you wanted it. And you said no. So uh, yeah, the 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 six s is, is pretty great. Um, I had the six. So the main difference here between the six and and 6S is the 3D touch. Um, 
which I like playing around with, uh, mostly on apps that don't have any 3D touch stuff because my awesome thing is the Taptic Engine. I like the way that it feels. I like that it's, <laughs> that it's like an extra, like, the thump. I don't know what it is. I know it's a, a, a nice... Um, it, it like the, it's not an oscillating engine. It's a not an oscillating vibrating engine. I'm gonna co- I'm gonna call it vibrating engine because I don't want to use the other word. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it instead of it just being like a normal um, vibration motor, uh, it actually kind of shakes side to side, so it actually thumps a little bit harder. Uh, and it actually, the default vibration actually includes a taptic like tap included with the standard vibration so it's a it's kind of nice um i i like that a great deal more uh, i've been playing around with hey siri which i'm going to turn my phone upside down so you can't do anything funny everyone um so yeah it's uh i, I actually turned siri back on uh I've, I've started playing with uh siri a little bit more um doing some some pretty neat things They're, i mean they've thrown in a bunch of stuff as part of ios 9 um, things like the ability to call up Siri um, from basically anywhere with just your voice, not plugged in. Now, was um, that a, is that a success feature, or was that everything? Because I didn't see that happening on my 5S just yet. When it, before it's I a success thing, it yeah. is a success. It's, it's a 6S only feature. Okay, um, I'm not sure why, and there's no like real reason for it other than like this is the new one. This isn't. You can call it from wherever. On the six S, you can't do it on the six, um, but it's a uh, it's actually a pretty neat uh, feature I, because like I've uh, so I saw somebody talk about it and they said they um, they said they've been using it a lot more just in like the turn just in terms of just working like my phone sits on my desk when I'm working and I can mm-hmm. just like ask it stuff like you know hey what's the weather and by the way here's a, a nice pro tip if you have the six S. And you have the the Siri business turned on. Put your phone face down, and it won't respond. That is no actually way. a design feature. Yeah, it's a no design way. feature. It's a battery saving feature, from from yeah. what I've heard. Like they, they, that's where the, that's where they got some of the additional battery life. So they shrunk the size of the battery, yeah. um, but they're getting an extra hour. Um, and one of the things is they're when the device it lays screen side down. Um, it actually powers down a couple things. One thing too is that if you get a notification, it will not light up the screen. Yeah. Um, if it detects that it's that it's that it's the screen side down, that's and that's that's one way that they're they're getting the loose change out of the couch to uh, <laughs> to scrape together that extra hour of battery life. So, yeah. So so my screen is is face up right now. So if I say Hey Siri, uh, Siri pops up and says What's going on? Actually, it doesn't say What's going on. It just kind of goes Ding. Um, the other nice part about uh, the new Siri thing is that if you have the, the, uh, mute switch turned on, uh, Siri doesn't talk back when you like mm-hmm. ask it things. That was it's no- actually, it's actually kind of nice that they've like tried to do a lot of things. It's like, Oh, well that seems kind of smart. I kind of like that. So, um, it was, it was nice. I, uh, I had to get up at six in the morning at a place with no cell phone signal to go somewhere with Wi-Fi to go order the five S or the six S's hmm. and then found out that I didn't have to do that because Apple made more six S's than they made sixes. So Holy crap. Yeah. So, so I went in, um, I actually had a reservation. I got up, got the reservation chill. I think you had problems with, with, with getting a reservation. If, if I remember, I think you were the one I tweeted tweeting with, right? So they had, they had closed, they had closed reservations yeah. and I actually called Apple and the the lady wasn't necessarily thrilled to speak with me, but she at what pretty th- much at four in the morning. Me. No, I called her at like one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Oh, um, on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was on Wednesday, and said, "Hey, I was wondering. I heard that if you that you guys didn't allow for any." walk up customers on Friday at the Apple stores. And she goes, well, it depends on you where you live, but yes, that's, that's very true. The majority of our short stores have zero extra stock for Friday. So I said, well, can you check all the stores in the Pittsburgh area, Ross park, uh, shady side and, uh, South Hills village. I said, Mm -hmm. preferably South Hills village would be where I'd be going. 
And she said, yes, none of those stores have any additional stock past their reservations. So I said, okay, I guess I'll be going to AT&T. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. So I went to my normal AT&T store where I can almost guarantee you no one else goes because it's in it's downtown. Um, there's usually a about 20 of us maximum max in line. I want to say this year there was about 10. Um, and I did talk to one of the AT&T reps and he was saying that the reservation system killed their orders as well as um, the way I guess it, Apple did their pre-orders this year completely detracted from any of the carriers getting pre-orders along with the, them doing the almost subsidized version. So it's interesting to see how Apple's kind of attacking the, the carriers as well. That's weird. Well, I actually, I ordered, I pre-ordered mine through AT&T. Mm -hmm. um, I pre actually, I ordered both of mine through AT&T uh, because every year everybody complains about how Apple blows up. And last year at six in the morning, I was able to, or three in the morning, I was able to get my six, no issues. Uh, I got my, I got both successes um, without any issue this year mm -hmm. uh, delivered on Friday the 25th. Um, and it was pretty great. Uh, I, I honestly, I've, I've done it through the AT&T. I honestly go through the AT&T app. I just hit upgrade. I want the six S I want this size, this color Bye. and then they take my money. See now, uh, now we, we did that and, uh, it didn't go through. We got a weird error and ended up having to cancel the order. And we have to start from scratch, uh, which it's not going to be hard to get it, uh, at this point. Uh, and uh, because I, I had done that for her phone, and I did, did mine through Apple because I wanted to do the Apple upgrades plan. Which, oh, right. side note, uh, by the way, there's a little caveat with the uh, Apple upgrade plan that I did not find anywhere when I was looking at this in advance. Um, you have to have a credit card. Not a debit card. Ooh. You have to have a credit card for them to run their credit check on and take the initial payments. That's weird. I, I, I don't like that. That was. I'm. I'm kind of glad that. So I. I like I said. I got ten in the morning. The day it was going to launch, and then I had a really, cool, actually, a really cool opportunity. Uh, client had some time open, and I actually ended up in Somerset uh, recording some interview footage uh, at exactly the same time I was supposed to meet. For, and I couldn't cancel my reservation anyways. There was no mechanism to do that. Uh, Sunday morning, I was like, okay, um, let's see about doing this. And and I looked in there, sixty four gigabyte uh, AT and T. Uh, uh, just, the, there's just a six X at, I'm sorry, six S I'm sorry. All the letters and everything from the Google announcement are throwing me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and the only thing that I couldn't get was a 64 bit rose gold. That's the only thing that wasn't in stock when I checked Sunday morning. That's impressive that, cause I mean, you guys know, well, no, because you guys are usually ahead of uh, this and at your AT&T store, but going to the, do you have any, do you have any? Oh yeah. We have 16, we have eight gigabyte, uh, white ones. So it's like, you know, or, or for sprint or something <laughs> like that, you know, it's so nice to just pull up the site and say they do or they don't, even though they didn't, I would have been happy because I wouldn't have been wasting a morning a Sunday afternoon, whatever, going into the Apple store and be like, you got that thing that everybody wants? No. Okay. Uh, and, and being kind of disenchanted with it. It's, it's a better experience in the long run, uh, except for yeah. that upgrade plan. So I actually went with next, I, I think I'm going to go with the yearly. I don't know. I'm on the fence on whether I'm going to go yearly or just pay the damn thing off in in eight in what eighteen months I guess it is, and just uh, kind of go with the that. only thing I'll throw out there is that the yearly thing requires you to pay the last payment. Because this is what I had to do. I had to pay. So I've been paying my normal month, you know, monthly phone payment, whatever. And then the la when I went to order my phone. Mm -hmm. I had to pay my last one, which is like 37 bucks or something like that. Right. And then right. I still had to pay the taxes for the new one. Right. Um, so, it's, you're not, yeah, so it's not like you're getting it completely nothing out of pocket. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's, I, I, if I had waited a month, it would have been zero out of pocket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So oh, I, I wanted it on the, I wanted it on the year. That's the whole reason I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really worried about the 37. So, um, the other thing is that because so Apple sets a thir they sold 13 million. This is their biggest opening weekend ever because it's bigger than the six and the six is bigger than the five S and so on and so forth. There was a guy. He was an analyst and I believe his name was Matt Hargraves. He was from some some analyst, some sort of uh, investor company. And he said. That he was like, I did some Googles and Apple's not saying anything, so their supply is low and they're not going to sell as many as they did last time. 
And um, everybody else heard Tim Cook say, we're very pleased with the pre-orders. And everybody went, yeah, they're going to sell a whole bunch of these. It's not a big deal. And uh, this guy was he sent like a, one of those like anal, uh, analyst notes to all of his customers. And he was like, uh, yeah, they're not going to sell that many. They come out and sell 13 million bigger than last year. And this guy looks like a complete and utter idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody like basically everybody just kind of pointed at this guy and went, uh, you screwed up. But he like tried to say like, oh, you know, we've dug into the supply chains and we've done some Googling and, you know, we had, there's more availability than there was last year. And last year, you know, they sold 10 million. So if there's more availability, it's like, no, they just made more. It's fine. (laughs) They sold 13 million. They had just as many pre-orders. They just happen to make they, more this they year just than they really, did last year. They just really churned it out. Uh, okay, I want to get into some of the, the features of this phone. We talked about a little bit here and there of it. Um, and really, that 3D touch thing, you have to feel to, to believe kind of thing. You really don't understand it until you've had a chance of this in your hand. Thankfully, you just go to an Apple store and play around with the damn thing, right? Yeah. Um, but um, so, so let, let, me, let me show off. I actually got uh, screenshots here. You guys should be able to see this on your feedback over there. Uh, so basically... <laughs> You know, you have the two presses. So, like, say it's Twitter. I want to do my first. Pr- oh, actually, there's only one level of this. And I have search, new tweet, uh, new message, and everything. Mostly the Apple apps have their stuff. Like, you know, most common people to message when you're going into the messages. I don't know. Have you seen any other apps as far as, like, from, from the home screen do anything? A lot of them. Uh, Instagram does. Yeah, Instagram, Instagram does, does, too. Messages does. Phone does. Mm-hmm. Um, calendar has add an event. Um, so, so mostly I, I do, I do really like the Safari one. So you can go jump right to your bookmarks, jump right to a new private tab. I don't jump even right know to a new tab. I don't even know where my Safari is. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually waiting for Al Capitan tomorrow and I'm probably leaving right. Chrome again. Cause I hate it. Um, yeah, the, um, I, the, the, uh, it, it's going to be a little bit before we start to see 3d touch apps. Um, one of them was Tweetbot um, that I use for Twitter. Um, their developer came out and said the new version that's coming very, very soon. And by the way, if you like apps and they come out with a new fully paid version, buy it. Don't be dumb. Don't be mean and don't know. Oh, I have to pay for the app again. What do you mean? This isn't free forever. These people have, this is their job. They don't work somewhere else. and They're doing this in their free time. This is their business. Support them. Anyways, um, he said Tweetbot 4 will not have 3D Touch out of the, bo- uh, out of the gate. Um, he said mostly because uh, we only found out about 3D Touch like two weeks ago. Uh, and he said all of the things that I thought would be really cool for 3D Touch um, in, in practice aren't. He's like, I got it working. He's like, it works. It's not a problem to get it working. He said, I just have different ideas on what we should do with that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not entirely fleshed out on that. So uh, chill. 3D Touch is coming, but not not right now. There's going to be a lot of apps. Third-party apps now are going to be able to – like I'm interested to see things like Overcast, the podcast mm-hmm. app. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see um, Play X Playlist. Um, I'd like to see some things there, um, but for the most part, we're probably not going to see anything for probably another two, three weeks, four weeks before I'd, we start to what, see those updates coming. I'll tell the, you what. I'll tell you what I was playing with today that I, that I was like, oh, all oh, this completely makes sense. Of all things, I was playing with Pinterest today, and mm. you go in to go in here, and uh, let's just whatever this is, and you do the first level, and there's actually I don't know if you can see those there on the video, but mm-hmm. like around my finger are these little circles for like for 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 liking, for repinning, and for sending, and I just slide into it, and I've liked that picture. I have like that that Instagram, but also there's that's the double level thing. So there's the first level where you get those options, and then so I that's pre- the peak. That's the peak, and then was it the pop or if you push harder and then push yeah. harder, it goes full screen. So which is you know certainly mimics what's going on with the pictures because once again you know you're in here, you press a little bit, it pops up, you pull in, and it goes full screen. But also, uh, so these are live photos, right? And if you press on them you also get the motion from your live photos as well. And you see, I, I obviously don't hold my camera long enough, uh, as you can tell there. Uh, but you get a lot uh, of- I believe it's 9.1 is actually going to fix that. That's called a droop. The, the actual term for that is called a droop. And they, um, 
are going to change that so that if it's not seeing a face um, or if it notices it uses the accelerometer that you're dropping the camera, not dropping it completely, but you're like dropping it down, Mm -hmm. um, that it will stop taking the video. And this so is, basically those things will go away. And this was really nice because people were just kind of sitting and doing a podcast. There's a lot of there's a lot of movement. Uh, the other weird thing, and I'm wondering if El Capitan is going to fix this. When I loaded this into Photos app, uh, it shows the initial photo and it shows the motion as a separate video. Actually, so this, yeah, I know that's it's the not implementation. Yeah, yeah, that's so that's how it actually works. So what you'd get is a 12 megapixel picture. Yeah, and you get a three second video. That happens on e- that happens a second and a half on either side, and there's audio so in there when too. When you import it in, yeah, because when you import it in, it's the, a dot mov or movie file, and a JPEG is the actual picture. So I'm interested to see what happens when we get um, once photos for the Mac and photos for iPad and all these other things start to pick up on how to work with them, because mm-hmm. um, right now they don't. So that'll that'll be coming soon. I actually I don't know. Does iOS nine on the iPad like iPad Air two anything like that do it? Because I don't have an iPad, so I can't test it. So so and we were playing around with this at work because I had a video or a live photo I took of Christopher. So if you send that to someone, um, like in messages that doesn't have force touch, they get the bullseye in the upper left hand corner or upper left hand corner of the picture when they, um bring the photo up full screen and hold their finger on it. They can watch the live video as well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you can share It's backwards compatible. You can share those with others. The obviously it's sending and a a movie. So it takes a lot longer to send in a, in an iMessage. Um, and, but they can't create them. So, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there was that, uh, the other one is uh, touch ID. On the iPhone 6S is stupid fast now. It's yeah, too fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost. Uh, <laughs> like, you want to turn down the sensitivity a little bit, don't you? Like, uh, in, in a minute. It's, there's, no, there's no weight anymore. There used yeah. to be a weight. Like, you used to have to, like, hold it there for a little bit. Now yeah. it's like, oh, I completely missed so, my lock So screen. it's so fast that, you know, you go and just hit your finger because you instinctively hit that home button just to check your notifications, right? And then you're or you like. check the time. Or check the time. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wait, I'm in the phone. You know, and I think, I, you know, as it is in the morning, I'm already like, you know, uh, taking it off of the uh, 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 stereo in the bathroom and then accidentally starting and stopping my thing. I'm going to like, I feel like I'm going to accidentally touch ID this thing, just carrying it around and putting my thumb in the wrong part of the phone, you know, uh, yeah. and, and then who knows what you'll miss cue from there. So I, it's great awesome they made it so much better uh but yeah I, i'm with you it's like almost too fast it's, like it's, it's like crazy fast you did you did too uh, good the of camera a job being 12 megapixels is pretty great although i've seen mixed reactions on the, mm-hmm. the quality of said camera mm-hmm. um a lot of the camera sensors have gone to 12 megapixel and apple has held back on 8 megapixels since the 4s um because Apple didn't get into the megapixel race because they were trying to make the sensor better and better and better and the lens better and better and better without actually changing the number of megapixels of the pictures. Um, so would... there was actually a, a Ben Lovejoy from uh, 9 to 5 Mac did a comparison of a DSLR and the uh, 12, me- 12 megapixel camera and the 8 megapixel from the 6. And he was like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of nice things going on here, but the phone is trying its like just completely too hard to do motion blur to make sure that it's nice and smooth and there's not too many jaggies Mm -hmm. in the, uh, in the image. Um, he's like, there's just a lot of software stuff that's going on in the background that normally I, you wouldn't see. Um, he's like, but it does better on most things. It does look very nice. The pictures are bigger, that sort of stuff. But, uh, and for the most part, people are taking pictures on their iPhone and they're sending it to people who are also looking at the pictures on their iPhone. Very right. few people are pulling them up on large screens, that sort of stuff. Right. I, uh, I've been pretty impressed with, I uh, was showing a little bit, uh, basically just about everything I've shown has been taken with this phone uh, since I've got it. And I, I've been kind of impressed with uh, the detail, the level of detail. Now, are you doing, when you take all your pictures, are you leaving them all live photo or are you currently, turning that on and off as I'm needed? I'm currently leaving it iPhoto because I think if I don't do that, I'm not going to really remember to not do it. And uh, in low light, in low light, you won't get 
as good of a picture. Okay. If you're leaving live photo on, mm-hmm. like even like I'm drop, taking a still picture. You can't drop the aperture as far. I'm taking a staff picture of uh, of this one, and I I even left it on, even though it's just a, a you know single, you know mm-hmm. something that's not motion. But I guess it is something I should start start thinking about a little more because it doesn't make sense for everything, and why take up all that extra space, right? Right. So right, and then they also have they also added a, uh, a five megapixel front facing camera, so selfie game strong. <laughs> uh, and you get the you get the selfie flash. You also get selfie, selfie flash. flash. <laughs> um, selfie flash is a, a thing you will by the way you will see someone in a bar very very soon who has the selfie flash turned on and when it happens don't judge them <laughs> they're just trying to get that selfie they're just trying to let people know that they're in they're in public they're having a good time and this is what they look like while having a good time it's going to happen it's going to happen a lot um you also see it at sporting events too um so that 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 was nice of them um also, the aluminum body of the phone is a completely different aluminum. It's the 7000 series aluminum from the Apple Watch. Uh, it is apparently far less bendy than the old one was. Uh, there was the whole bend gate thing from uh, the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. It is less bendy. Um, my son already scratched it, which made me mad. <gasps> no way. Yeah. My, my case it's just like, came in today. so My case came in the next day. Um the uh the 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 my case uh he scratched it with his teeth because he's he's an animal sometimes um what case did you get sorg uh it was just the eight dollar one i found on amazon is from uh jet tech so it's just kind of a bit of i just okay. want i just want a bumper you know and uh just tight unseen i'm like hey or was it, it was like six bucks i don't know uh it's mine, got that plastic was, uh, on the back six dollar silicone case from uh from from Amazon. The only thing I don't like about it is that the um, I don't know if you can see it in the video here. There is like no lip. There's like a, a, like a whisper of a lip on the phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife just got hers today, and hers is much stronger. Um, That's right. I, so I, I was a little worried um, because I loved you know playing with it without the case. Um, I loved how much it meant the side of the screen. Like the, there yes. was just just the lack of bevel on both sides of the phone, and I, I was really worried about uh, having that kind of space there as, as you're kind of dealing with the sideways, um, you know, playing a lot of games. By the way, I got the big one sixty four, so I've loaded like every game I've wanted to play uh, that I've been like yep. size managing on the thirty two gigabyte, and and it's ridiculous. I downloaded a three gigabyte plus Disney Infinity toy box um, just to try it out, uh, and I the, that was a big thing. Uh, and it, it will continue to be a thing as long as Apple does it. Um, Apple keeps coming out with 16 gig as the base model. Um, and everybody keeps getting mad about it. And, mm-hmm. uh, Phil Schiller was asked directly at WWDC, why are they doing that? And he said, we have iCloud photos. We have uh, Apple Music. All of this stuff is streaming. Nobody's saving stuff to their and, phone. And I think for the most part, we, when you talk to common user, yes, I think they're absolutely right. I think I think the people you always know, having this conversation are having you know you know we're we're having that larger conversation now and now I, I think with app thinning I think app thinning I'm interested yes. to see am I going to am I going to go back to potentially go back to a sixteen because mm-hmm. I have gotten with with the reduct the price reduction between the price reduction in iCloud and Google Photos. Um, I'm going to start managing my photo library a lot differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and that being said, with with app thinning, I'm having I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to be able to potentially jump back to the 16 gig model. But let's be honest, you're a power user like me and AJ here. Uh, I, you're not going back. Let's be honest. I. You're taking video with the, that the majority, thing, right? The majority of my space is taken up by photos. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this, by the way, this is the amount of space I'm using on my phone already. 17.3 mm-hmm. gigs. I can't go to a 16 gig if I wanted to. Um, I have 15 gigabytes left. And it's it's a... I, I, have, I have plenty of space left. The issue is I want to take pictures. And I don't want to have to worry about, okay, did I manage my photo library enough mm-hmm. to go to the park this weekend? Like... I just want to take pictures. I it's so, and, and by the way, it's so uh, it's so a little misleading because I just looked at the capacity, and and even though it's a sixty four gigabyte phone, when, when it says fifty five, is that is is like I know it, it's obviously going to be less for the sixty four because the the bytes bits kind of stuff. 
but is that you know is the system stuff not included in that number like is it above and beyond is being taken up by the system do you know it's fine it's fine you're fine it's fine <laughs> i know it's fine i just i'm just trying to figure out what the distinction is and making sure i, I understand 55.6 is usable i think that's the actual usable okay space so that's the on top of the os is like another five gigabytes or whatever the difference is and I mean, uh i'm at let's see here i'm at i mean i have 107 apps I have 96 songs on my phone. This is this, this would make my old two, phone laugh. I have 223 apps, 6,000 photos. Um, I have 19,000 photos. 85 videos. So I, have, <laughs> I have 490 videos. Like this is what happens when you have kids. You just take this like is, I have 20,000 pictures and almost 500 videos. This is a pull out your numbers. There was, there was, there was, right. they, they played this game. Wait, what's the, they still have an app limit? Am I reaching the app limit here? Uh, I have 209 uh, apps, so uh, no, you're not, you're probably yeah. not reaching the app limit. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's fine. Uh, I, the problem is, is that the 16 gig to me is still too small. I think they should start with the 32. Um, the, the issue, the issue here to me at least is that all of the storage stuff that they're worried about, that every, they want, that people are worried about is all software. They want software to handle it, and software doesn't necessarily handle things terribly well. Mm -hmm. So um, I have enough space on my phone that it's not an issue, so that's kind of where I go there. Um, I was going to keep moving here off of the iPhones. By the way, the 6S, 6 Plus, they are the same phone. Um, the only the, the, By the way, they kept optical Im image stabilization on the camera only on the 6 Plus, which made me, or a 6S Plus, which made me real mad. I was hoping that would slide down to the 6S this year. Um, we also have the iPad Pro, which is weird because they brought the 32 gig back for the iPad Pro. They did. They it's the only one that has 32 <laughs> gigs. I'm sorry, the iPod uh, uh, iPod Touch also has 32 gigs. The I, so I I heard a rumor, some sort of I don't want to say it's a rumor, but like some sort of like supply chainy sort of thing that like doing 32 gigs is more expensive than doing 16 or 64. It's just like the way the chips are priced the way that they're like handed out, I guess it's more expensive to do 32 than it is to do 16 and 64. So they skip 32 and go to 64. Um, by the way, Sheila, this is the point where I say I was right. Mm -hmm. And they came out with an iPod, an iPad pro and not a touchscreen Mac. Cause that was, you were saying they were going to come and out. And with I st I'm still, I'm still saying sooner or later, it's there's going to be a, Dude, it's Mac. it's coming. It's a convergence. It's just a step cool. in that direction. Wait, wait it, it, it. It's 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 another way for Apple to make another dollar stretch stretching out existing products. No, wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait. Here's where I came. Here's where I came, so here I had this thought today. So I started thinking about this, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. The iPad Pro starts seven ninety nine, goes to like nine, I think eight ninety nine. No, it goes to ten ten something. Yeah, but I'm saying like the the not just the Wi-Fi ones are like seven ninety nine and eight seventy nine or something like that, and then the Wi-Fi one. Or by the way, the LTE one is the you have to buy the top level one to get LTE. You cannot get LTE in the base model. Wow, which I think is interesting. Yeah, wow. You have to go to you have to pay the it's like a thousand something, but you get under twenty eight gigs of storage, I guess. Um, the the thing that interests me the most is that the iPad Pro is one inch wider and one inch uh, deeper than the macbook one and it is half the thickness if you add the key, if you add the keyboard cover it's about the same thickness hmm. they are the same size device the processors by the way the 6s and the 6s plus are sniffing at the macbook one cpu benchmarks so that is so you're already that's the a9 the a9x and the ipad pro is likely faster so you're probably beating the macbook one on performance and then you have the prices like right around the same numbers ish. You're basically like overlapping the two. If you're an iPad person and you want a tablet OS, you don't want all the cruft of a full desktop OS. That slides in. It, they stretched it all the way to the bottom of the network of the of the notebook line. And then if you want the super fancy MacBook that only has one port. Surprise! They both only actually the iPad Pro has more ports than the MacBook One, which I, I, I've I've taken the MacBook One thing from Marco Arment. So I was gonna say, why, I was from. wondering where you're getting the one from. Yeah, the, it's a joke they've been running with on the uh, on Accidental Tech Podcast, where they the, because it only has one port, so it's like the MacBook, oh. not the MacBook Pro, like the MacBook 
One. Let's call it the MacBook One. And so they've been going with that for months. So that's what I think of when I hear that. But you're already at this point where the two devices are effectively the same thing. One of them runs a tablet OS. One of them runs a desktop OS. They're not going to run the same thing because they don't run the same chips. Now, no. we've been through this before. Yeah, they could very well have a version of OS X. The kernel is already the same thing. So they could, in theory, have the same device that runs on ARM. Uh, they could run OS X and iOS on the same chipset. The problem is, is that you'd have to have app developers change, recompile stuff to match that chipset. And let's ask window developers how that worked out for them with the RT series. Mm-hmm. So it didn't, by the way. So, so, so I don't imagine them doing that. I think this is their way of getting more productivity stuff out of iPad users. And given the fact that they've partnered with Cisco and Microsoft and IBM to start moving these iPads, I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of keep this going and they're like, hey, you want an iPad in the in, in, in your environment? You don't have to worry about you know, patching. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. antivirus because it's all sandboxed go that's why they did that um i just don't i don't see i don't see enterprise lump and i'll be interested because i'll be attending one of the apple apple and business breakout sessions here in the next next month um i'll be interested i don't see any enterprise jumping at the pro i i could see it um working for a very large company and being handed a really not great hp laptop um, I would jump at the chance for an iPad. The problem is, is that again, I would like to use a virtual desktop with mine and I can't use a mouse with an iPad unless right. you're using Citrix X one receiver mouse thing that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, I think there's an overlap there and I think that they could do it. I just don't know if they're really making that jump yet. Mm-hmm. And I do think, I mean, they could, they very well could come out with a touchscreen Mac. I speaking, just don't speaking think of, it's speaking of of mouse on a device. Have you force touched your keyboard? Yes, force touching <laughs> the keyboard is the greatest. <laughs> have you seen that sword? No, I haven't. Three D touch your keyboard when you're in a text input field. Ta da! You have a mouse. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wait, were you it talking about like fingers on? It was two fingers swiping on the six S plus last year, or on the six plus last year. Uh, and on the iPad with iOS nine, and now with three D touch. I'm, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a text open field it. that isn't uh, uh, personal information. Open, open yeah. up like your um, a do, Google Doc or I something. I just do notes. I just do notes. Uh, start a new note. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Typing so, a bunch of stuff. So uh, one sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. I'm trying. I'm trying to get everything in here. Okay. So so I go in here. And you're saying so? Where do I type? Where do I push? Just start force. typing. Start typing in a bunch of text. Type in a bunch yeah, of text. Guys. Okay. And hit enter a couple times. Enter, and enter, enter. Type in some more text. Okay. Okay. Text, 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 text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now 3D touch. Yeah, 3D touch the uh, keyboard. Keyboard. Oh, the keyboard. What? <laughs> I don't even know if you can see it on the video, but there is definitely a cursor floating around there. Holy mm-hmm. crap! That changes yeah. it. That changes everything. Yeah, it does. Wow. Um, so the only th- thing that's different is everything. So this is so this this like changes things for like this changes your word game significantly, doesn't it? Yep. So now mm-hmm. wait, wait, does the iPad Pro have 3D Touch? No. So the no. Air, well, it, it'll it won't have 3D Touch, but it'll have so on the iPad. If you two finger touch, the two finger touch, you can swipe around. You can swipe oh. around. Yep. And on the Air 2, obviously, I get like side by side multitask for apps that have enabled it. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of the fact they came out with a keyboard cover. I'm a big fan of the fact they came out with the uh, the pencil, which I think is a dumb name, but I'm glad that they came out with that. According to Pixar, the performance of the pencil is like destroys everything. Like it's better than a Wacom tablet. It's better than a Cintiq. It's better or Wacom makes the Cintiq. Um, it's better than the Surface Pro. That, that, and this is according to Pixar animators who draw a lot. Do you think um, we'll see? Do you think we'll see a pencil for the next Air? Yeah, yeah. I think that right now they're going to hold all the big features. They're going to hold the iPad Pro features for the Pro for right now. 
and then the iPad Air 3 will come out. And it'll it's the trickle that. down theory of uh, of Apple features, basically. It'll trickle. And that's, that's what I'm that's what I'm waiting for. I'm not going to go pro because no. all I care about is the pencil. Yeah. Um, I have I have very capable keyboards that I really like to use with my Air, um, and the screen real estate doesn't get me anything other than a heavier bag. Yeah, and they have. Um, and by the way, yes, it looks like a Surface Pro. They're not the same thing. This is a you want, no. You want to see a Surface Pro? Look at the uh, the uh, what is it the the Android tablet that came out today. Let's, oh, let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's hold there. Let's hold there, guys. <laughs> let's get hold there, guys. I think we've 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 we've, we've done uh, about thirty nine minutes on Apple. They're 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 rioting in the chat room because everybody's well, on Android and Windows. Uh, we'll talk so. about that in a second. No, no, no. We'll get there. It's cool. Chill, everybody. <laughs> Chill. Out. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friends, uh, Slice on Broadway. Even though the rain has kept uh, some of our guests from the uh, from the uh, uh, studio here today, they've been supporting uh, Pittsburgh podcasting with the great pepperoni pizza. Perfectly. I missed a word there. Uh, but please check them out. Support them. Support the friends of the show. SliceOnBroadway.com. Uh, and uh, they're right here uh, along the tracks in Beachview. Uh, that's where we had a wonderful uh, meeting with our uh, Patreon supporter. Uh, and this will see business development uh, a couple of weeks ago. They, they, they wanted to go check it out since I hear about it so much on the show. And uh, you can also check them out at Carnegie PA down there on Main Street. And, uh, and, and tell them we said hi. Check them out on Twitter, PJH underscore Slice on the Twitters. And look for Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. And they'll make you hungry too. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, before I get to you, uh, I, I, we, we, I want to get to other awesome things of the week. We did have one uh, fan submission I saw out yes, there. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Miss Sinbin on Twitter because uh, she responded to our awesome things of the week. Uh, the gene edited micro pigs in China being sold as pets. I have no background on this. I'm sorry. I don't. We don't need to. We don't need to go into the gene editing because that seems crazy. I'm pretty sure that was the that was the sub, the subplot of the movie Gattaca. <laughs> if anybody remembers the movie Gattaca, um, yeah. I, I mean, they're being. If you're selling pigs as pets. You don't need pigs are for eating. Pigs are delicious, and I I approve of all forms of pig pig meat. Um, but her other one, yes, we found water on Mars. By the way, we found water on Mars before the Chiefs threw a, t- a touchdown at the wide receiver. That's how long it took the Chiefs to throw a touchdown at the wide receiver. That's sports ball, everyone. Sports ball. Um, yeah, we found water on Mars. That's awesome. So there might be cool stuff on Mars, and they're going to do some more investigation. I was hoping they were going to say, like, we found actual aliens and, like, high-fived them. And the, stuff, you know, but... I started reading the initial article that I found on this. and started reading, like, they found freaking aliens. And I'm just like, did they? Did they? Oh, it's water. Uh, but still, no, it's, it's just, still it's significant. It's still it's still massively significant because water means potentially more bio organic matter that uh, you know used to live there or whatever. Uh, so this says you know, hey, something something happened out here, you know, or, or yeah. potentially did, and we're we're leaning more and more towards that idea. Uh, so no, that is completely awesome. Uh, so, anyways, hey. We found water on Mars. Let's get back to nerd stuff that happened on Earth. Um, let's see here. What else do we have here? We have. Uh, so so so. Uh, let's, let's go to Google. Let's go to. Let's Google. go. Let's say Google's the next thing. I just wanted to Google double check. Did things today. Just wanted to double check. Um, oh, just wanted to double check. Uh oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Did you, did you guys? Uh, so, so just real quick on the Apple thing did any of you go into at&t stores or to carriers on friday no not on friday no, went in on sunday i got asked 18 times in the at&t store if i wanted a 50 dollar ipad mini and i had to i had to pretty much say under no certain terms do i want the ipad mini 3 no. No. because it, everyone's trying to dump their stock and and the at&t store was ridiculously trying to push to the point where the manager was making all of the salespeople turn in a little slip of paper that like confirmed what they tried to upsell. It was a little ridiculous. Yeah, if they had done that to me, I would have said, "You can give it. You could pay me fifty dollars, and I'll take one." 
We'll go the other route there. You pay me fifty dollars, and I'll take that iPad Mini three. I, I noticed they've been pushing it heavy when you log into the website for your yeah. billing. So yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about Google because Google did things today to the point where I forgot they were going to do it. By the way, Mac uh, Mac OS ten El Capitan is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry about your internets, everybody. Uh, they came out with new Nexus phones today. Uh, these were leaked like a month ago, and they finally announced them for real today. Uh, LG is making the Nexus 5X. 5X. Uh, it is a 5-inch phone. Uh, it's basically the, the sequel to the Nexus 5 that a lot of people liked. Um, and then they were really sad that they went to the Nexus 6. Uh, it didn't. It didn't make a five-inch phone after that. Um, they also many people refer to the Nexus Six as Shamu sized, which I thought was fun. Uh, Nexus Five X. They put fingerprint sensors uh, and the Six P, which is a six-inch version made by uh, Huawei. Uh, Huawei. Is it Huawei? Yeah, Huawei. 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 We'll go with Huawei. Um, so yeah, Six P. It's a six-inch phone, uh, basically all-metal frame, giant battery. It's a six-inch phone. Uh, but both of these are both Google Nexus devices, which means their carriers aren't in the way. This is their, like, pure Google phone. There's no, like, stupid skins on them or anything like that. Um, they made a lot of talk about the 6P's camera and mm -hmm. how uh, they were taking some shots at the 6S, which I found very funny. Um but yeah, I'm I'm glad to see that Google came out with a new five inch phone. Uh, they dropped the price back down. The Nexus Six was like a six hundred dollar phone, and no one wanted it, so they had to sell it through the carriers. Uh, the Nexus Five X is starts at uh, three seventy nine for a sixteen gig model, and the Six P is money. I forget what the Six P is. Um, but the, the, I mean, the they P, came up with nice the, phones. The P the was com sense. comparatively coming in. There's a lot of P's, and I moved my pop screen. Um, it, it came in comparatively about $200 less than the uh, 6S, the iPhone 6S. Uh, and, there you go. and considering a lot of that hardware in there, I, I think it's very, a very comparable phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. Um, and they both run the Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Marshmallow is the name, everyone. So, you know, not much more coming. There he is. Um, Here he kind of looks like a marshmallow, doesn't he? Yeah, he's very much the the uh, the android. I believe his name is um is Android, and uh, he's he's already very marshmallow shaped. Mm -hmm. uh, they they're they're touting the six P as as elegantly designed, pure Android, and the five X is all around performer. It's like what, it was like oh the and the five is here and there it goes like. Um, I'm interested to see how well they do. I would like to see camera shots between the 5X, the 6P, the iPhone 6S, and the 6S Plus. Um, one of my biggest concerns, I would love to switch to Android from time to time. Every time I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to switch to Android. The moment I start to go down that route, I go, right, their cameras suck. Right. And then I'll I tell you what, the, the Samsung Galaxy line does a really nice job with their camera. It's just the touch whiz is right rough so, so your choices are you get a you get a trash camera on the nexus line but you get pure android or you get a nice camera on the six on the galaxy f6 but then you have to deal with samsung's touch whiz it's like there's nothing that's nice about the two uh the one plus one a coworker of mine had it and he really liked it um but you had to change a setting in order to get the camera to take decent pictures which i thought was dumb that was uh, that was the that was the argument when uh katie had her galaxy she was like a six or something she said it was too difficult to take a picture no that was any good they're right just, and just, it's like that's that's not i want to take out my phone and go oh look and i've taken a picture and it's going to turn out pretty great actually this one turned out poorly but um i think you'd have a better chance with a lumia running windows phone if you wanted to be able to do that Right, but I want to take out I want to take out my phone, I want to take a picture and I would do it quickly and I don't want it to suck. That's an iPhone. Um not, I have yet to see any sort of picture sample from any Android phone. That includes the Galaxy S6 mm -hmm. um that I like the look of. That always just there's always just something about the pictures like if you blind test me on pictures, I pick the iPhone every time. Right. Um then that's not me being like an Apple fanboy. It's like I just like the way the pictures look. Um, every picture of both of my kids has been taken with, uh, with iPhones that we have. Um, 
they're my day to day camera. I don't have a, a, a set digital camera because this is I want the best phone and uh, the best camera on me at all times, and that's the iPhone as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I'm interested to see what they how good the five X is. Um, it looks like they've done, they've built a really nice camera and, or that they built a really nice phone and made it a five inch phone and it's not the six. Um, starting at 379, 32 goes up to 429. So you add 50 bucks to double the, uh, double the storage. Um, but it's a, you know, they, they've done like a really nice job of, of, I like the fact that they also went to two different carriers. They went to two different manufacturers for the phones. Um, so you don't get like LG, LG or Motorola, Motorola. Um, the, the six P starts at four ninety nine for 32 gigs. Then it's 50 bucks after that to go up in space. Um, and I think, I think, you know, go back to, if you want to get a phone, look at the Nexus line first. And the Nexus line is a good line of phones, especially yeah. if you're, and by the way, these work on all the carriers, which yeah. was interesting. Cause I was actually talking to a, f- a friend of mine. Who was like, I'm I'm my Galaxy, I think he had a city of an S five and he's like, My S five sucks and I want to get a new phone. Um and I said, Hey, Google just came out with the two new Nexus phones and he goes, Yeah, but are they gonna work on Verizon? They do. Uh, all of the because well that was that's always been the thing, is that like they come out with a their Nexus line and it only works on AT&T and T Mobile. Right. Um and these, these are supported are- these support the, the bands on all of the um on all of Verizon and Sprint. And also uh, the Google Fi, which means, which is another reason why I support Sprint and T-Mobile, because I think those are the two carriers around Google Fi. That is correct. So, uh, Um, other than that, we had Marshmallow was released as well. Um, I I thought this was, you know, not as groundbreaking, I think, as 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 KitKat was or anything. Here's where I think we're going to see some interesting stuff kind of come out of Marshmallow is Mm -hmm. how much stuff is going to break. Because so they're re they're redesigning the way Marshmallow handles um, all of its security, mm-hmm. and it's going to be very remnant, re, uh, reminiscent of uh, what was it iOS seven when we started getting you used to grant access to photos, and then it granted it granted you access to photos, the camera, the microphone, contacts. It, it, it did everything right, and they started splitting all that out. Um, that's what Marshmallow is finally going to bring to the table where you can get granular on what you grant access to inside of an application and you can actually turn it on and off. Um, I don't know how many developers are going to be prepped for that. And when you don't allow an app to have access to something that it thinks that it should, what's, what's it going to do? Um, well, especially especially but- when you see things like Facebook is entitled to read your text messages um, and, and a lot of apps uh, act under that jurisdiction it, it'll be interesting to see how this plays yeah. out well and, and i think that that's this is something that's been coming um uh, mostly around the fact that the uh android security model has not been great um there's you know very 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 few reports of malware on ios and there are very many 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 reports on malware on android um so it's it's interesting for me to see them try to go down a more granular security route. Um, so, I mean, there's there's just a lot of things going on there. Uh, I'd like to, I'm hopeful to see them not break too many things, but hey, you're, they're going to break some things. Uh, think this is why uh, my Nexus Seven is somewhere else. Um, only the Nexus stuff is going to get this stuff next week. Um, right. You're not Does that include see my? Else come out of the. Uh, you're not going to see your Galaxy S6 getting marshmallow next week. No, no, no. So and there's, there's an LG. Th- isn't there an LG device that's going to ship pretty soon? Uh, maybe. I mean, the G4 just came out. That's that's fairly recent. Um, that might actually come with it, though. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Is my is my the last of the great Nexus Seven support? Actually, they said Nexus Seven. There hasn't been a new one since the one that I think all of us bought. Oh, it, is, bought. it is. It is next week. Uh, okay. I did see the seven is in there. I have the twenty thirteen Nexus Seven as well. Mm-hmm. Um, by, by the way, by so, the way, side note. Uh, in related tablet news, I, and AJ, you probably saw this news by now. Uh, but we talked about the fifty dollar Amazon Fire tablets. Uh, yes. Chachi has ordered one. Uh, he didn't order six. He, no, I he mean, just ordered one. A, he I didn't ask Kindle me. Fire. He didn't ask me if I, I wanted a, to go in on it with him. So, I have a Kindle Fire HD here, and mm-hmm. it's it's it sucks. I don't like it. 
Um, <laughs> I bought it because I was going to put like I was going to try and like hack it to bits and I never did. I think he wants it for um, reading. So, so I would I would get it just for their their library personally. But yeah, yeah. Just to, yeah, just to get fine. on it, you you I'm actually get uh, uh, Amazon Underground, which I can't get on a Nexus Seven. Apparently, you have to get on the phone because you get a bunch of free games. I yeah, really you get if you buy a new Nexus phone, you get a fifty dollar Google Play credit. Um, they, I mean, they're they're really trying to get people to jump into this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they also came out with uh, some new things on the uh, on the Chromecast side of things. Or yes. do we want to do do we want to do tablet or do we? Well, well do let, yeah, let's first? touch on this tablet because it kind I think it kind of goes more in line with what we've been talking about. So the Pixel team, which has the fantastic fifteen hundred dollar Google Chromebook. Uh, basically, uh, we've had a couple iterations of that. I got to get hands on with it when I picked up my Google Glass all those years ago. Uh, and then uh, you, you don't really see them much in a wild, uh, all that much, do you? I mean, I, I don't No, but, I've but, never seen one at all. I, <laughs> actually, I take that back. I might have seen one in a Best Buy a long time ago. That is, no, that is the not. thing that populates the Google campus for all those code developers there. And, uh, and that's about it. Uh, but it's but so still dumb. If I'm paying $1,500, I want an actual laptop. But it's a nice piece of hardware. If that's all yeah, you're cool. doing, so it's a, a nice pro. It is. It <laughs> so is. is a surface pro. There are a lot of things I could spend $1,500 on that is not a glorified web browser. <laughs> But Maybe anyways, but anyways, I guess the team has also been doing the design around the Pixel C, which is a tablet. Uh, basically, it's an Android tablet, and it's an it, iPad. It's an it's it's, <laughs> it's a ten <laughs> inch it's a ten inch <laughs> Android <laughs> tablet that's designed nicely, has a USB Type C connector, and they put a they have an optional keyboard that charges inductively. But it's a ten inch Android tablet, which has the same problems as the iPad. There's nobody makes tablet apps because. Nobody makes money off of tablet apps. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Android has no tablet apps. No, so. no, no. That's the thing. There's at least an ecosystem, right, for for iPad. You know, there's people you yeah. know, getting into it. There's yeah. businesses using people it. People build stuff who's, on the iPad. Who's Nobody's using an Android that. tablet? And, and it's, still, it's still that problem. I'm using Twitter on a 7-inch tablet, and it's the phone app. You know, things aren't reconfigured yeah. like they are for an iPad. You know, it, it's it's not taking advantage of that real estate the, in, in the best way. But still, if you're really down with Android, I know our buddy uh, Wheels is really big on the Android side of things. And I think he's got a keyboard for for his. I think he's got a 10 inch tablet, and, and and he lives on that thing a bit too. Uh, and some people do. I mean, we they're selling like like 20 inch Android tablets more or less that you can serve as your desktop computer. Some people really dig being in there i don't know who you are but somebody's really into that uh and and i think this is a nice device it competes in quality with the surface in an ipad uh price wise i think it starts at 500 dollars, 150 for the keyboard but the, the keyboard if it look it looks like it and all accounts look like it's going to be about as nice as the pixel keyboard which is really damn nice uh then then it, it, it'll probably be worth it to you if you're in that ecosystem. Like, like, I can't, I can't find the Pixel C anywhere on Google's website. I don't think it's sold just yet. Uh, yeah, it's and, and the, the interesting thing that no, I, I can't find, I can't find anything. Mm-hmm. Not even like a pre-order sort of thing. Like the Nexus Five, the Five X and the Six P are up. Yeah, they, they said that right, they right. wouldn't be pre-ordering, and it which should be available sometime during the holiday before the holidays are over. Mm-hmm. Oh God, which means it's <laughs> coming out December twenty third. Good the, job. The one thing that surprised me coming from the Pixel team is that it is running Android and it's not running Chrome OS. Right, right. But but well, but you but you got a team that's that's really good at hardware. It is a beautiful piece of hardware when you look at the Pixel, the Chromebook Pixel, regardless of whether it's running, right? And they wanted a nice box for their software to run it because that's not their typical uh, uh, th- that's not their typical forte is doing good, elegant hardware. Uh, so I think this is uh, you think of how the Surface kind of. Um, try to lead the hand of, of, of computer makers by setting the example of this is what our tablet computer can be and this is what we would like you guys to mimic and take you, you guys to take cues from. I think that's what Android's trying to do here, uh, much like the, the Chromebook. Look, this is what a Chromebook can be, the Pixel. You know, do something cool like this, manufacturers. We're giving you this stuff for free, you know. Help us sell this thing. And, and now they're saying, hey, look, this is what a tablet can be, and this is the thing you should be doing. Just like the Nexus phone is the sample of what the phone should be. This is the ideal experience from Google they say, this is how I want you to use these devices. Yes, we're letting you all make your own versions of this. 
Don't F it up. Uh, please make something like this. Oh, by the way, we I, can, I, can I throw out to, uh, according to Android police, has them tagged as sorry. Uh, there is no uh, wireless charging in the Nexus, either Nexus phone, 5X mm-hmm. or 6P. And there's no micro SD slot. And Android people are mad because you can't go any higher than 32 gigs on either on the uh, 5X. So they're like, wait a minute. I want to buy this five this five inch phone. It's going to be awesome. Wait, what do you mean I can't get more than 32 gigs of storage in this thing? But that's how Google's been on their on all their reference hardware recently. Except I mean, the, 6P year, goes to, the 6P goes to 128 gigs. Right. But the, but the but the prior line they've they've been dropping the the micro USB the thing that the thing that doesn't the thing that surprises me is how all the Android people made fun of all the Apple people when we went to the Lightning port and now they're dropping micro USB for USB C oh. so now all of your old cables guess what guys they're not going to work on any of your new devices. Yeah, but you throw a USB. There's there's going to be a bazillion of those USB Type A or mm-hmm. micro USB Type A to Type C connectors. Well, you could do the same thing with the Lightning, right? But it's, it's the same thing. But I mean, that's the sort of thing. It, it's just going to happen. This is always going to happen, regardless of who makes it or who does it. There's always going to be some change in connector because somebody wants to go thinner or they want to do something different, and it's always going to happen. I, I did find it interesting. Graphics cards. This the happens. With, this happens with graphics cards too. You got the like you can't drive a six you can't drive a sixty hertz four K display with anything less than the HDMI one point four. But somebody bought a a five hundred dollar graphics card like a year ago that has HDMI one point three. And it's you just you're gonna you're just gonna have to deal with that. And Chachi, yes, USB C is more compatible than Lightning, but I I can name the USB Type C devices off the top of my head right now. Yeah, it needs to populate, and, right? I mean, I mean, you, there's, the USB, a million, there's also it? a million different makers of Lightning cables. You can get Lightning cables on the cheap now. It's not like if you have to buy this twenty dollar one from from Apple. I bought a six dollar one from Amazon. Like right. they all work just fine. It's I can't I can't get behind like there are going to be there are going to be connector changes and that's just going to happen right, regardless right. of who does it there's always going to be there's always advances for, i mean we went from what was it mi- mini usb to micro usb and th- that happened but nobody had like a mini or micro usb phone at the time but i remember having blackberries at work and having to switch connectors mm-hmm. it happened back, back when the power cable had it integrated into the power cable and it wasn't just a usb you just port to flip swap the whole thing that's why <laughs> they did this it's like you just swap that cable in the middle because that cable is the part that's going to break so just swap that out and you're fine it's mm-hmm. it, i can't get i can't i can't get behind all that um <laughs> all yeah, right all right see. on that point <laughs> on that point i want to get to the chromecast because i got yes. the chromecast is near and dear to my heart but first i want to take a note please uh if you enjoy the podcast we're doing here on sorgatron media uh you're enjoying all this stuff uh you know sawtooth willy all kinds of other stuff by the way new sawtooth willies are rolling out we have a dedicated page now on youtube for sawtooth willy so please subscribe to that channel for sawtooth willy and uh and also uh facebook as well all the videos are also rolling out there so like subscribe however you like with that uh but we're making so much more than that uh we we we're doing a lot uh with clients with stuff all over for years now marketing videos so much more uh sorgatron media services uh you know we're we're doing video production editing with events sports promotional stuff it's not just pro wrestling we're doing stuff for uh, for companies i can't wait to tell you what i've been working on lately uh for an interesting marketing video for for a pretty uh, significant client here uh, i'm hoping to get them on the awesome cast because it's very it, it, check out my instagram from last friday there's a little hint for you uh we're helping with social media podcast development education all kinds of things we've been doing this stuff with uh seclair for over four years and really helping people discover them and uh, get people in the doors and uh, even a little bit of website development we can get around that too and help you out make sure everything connects to all your uh, media that you're doing all that content marketing that we're doing around your product please let us know uh we are your uh sidekick in video, social media, and creative marketing services. SorgatronMedia.com. Hit the contact page over there and check out our YouTube for uh, plenty of samples of some of the uh, other work that we've done on a more serious note. That is why somebody found it in a Spanish mall's basement. No, I would not pull over for Mr. Needle Nose. All right? Mr. Needle Nose can suck it. I am not pulling over for a fictional blue cartoon hedgehog. But, but he's super fast. I don't care. 
fans like it. I really enjoy, you know, painting my face, and I, uh, I started doing that as Inspire a lot. And um, when Ultimate Warrior died, as a kid, like hey, that's the colorful guy. Like obviously, you're gonna look at him and, and just. So I started painting my face once he died as like my tribute to him. The Fire Seven Inch Display Wi-Fi 8 Gigabyte. By the way, it's fifty dollars, and by the way, it comes in a six pack. Uh, if other people are looking to buy this and want to go on on a six pack, let me know. I think my Christmas shopping has been taken care of here. Who's a Dana Brooke fanatic out of you guys? Guilty. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? She talks through her nose. Ohio Linux Fest. It was originally uh, a group of Linux user groups or several Linux user groups in Ohio said, well, hey, why don't we get together and have a conference? So they all sort of converged on Columbus. Uh, at the uh, Ohio State campus. So let's get back to the Chromecast discussion from today's Google event. Uh, so, uh, like, so, so I, I'm a Chromecaster. I, I am the the guy Did with. You just mute. What's that? I think sword. Hello. So yeah, we have we have the we have Chromecasts. Uh, yes. they, they came out with two of them today. Yes, they uh, did. One of them is for audio. One and, of them is for They're still TV. pretty pointless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get beggars can't be choosers. I mean, we just got spot. They got Spotify support and Showtime support today. Well, wait, wait, um, well, wait, wait a minute. So, so we mean they're, they're they're useless. It sounds looks like they're doing plenty more than they were before, Shella. Different colors and flexible cables. Yeah, yeah different colors. Yeah. For someone sits all right, all right. Can we talk Great. about this form I, factor? I, you for know, a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I've tried to get behind the Chromecast multiple times, and I know Sora gets one of your favorite things. It, it's just I'm more interested in the Pixel C having a six week update cycle versus Chromecast <laughs> having some additional colors, and now now being actually to me more annoying to put behind my TV. Okay, okay. The, the I got. I can't. I can't get I I can't deny this Pokeball uh hanging from a USB cord behind my TV. Yeah, what the hell are they thinking on this side? Uh that's I mean they kept showing like it's like yeah, it's going to hang from your it can't be good for your your HDMI port to have something. It's like when your keys get too much stuff like mine do uh and it's all hanging from the 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 ignition slot in your car and it starts wearing on that. I feel like the same thing is going to happen when this thing just hangs from my TV the entire time. But Hey, it's multiple colors that I'll never see behind my TV, but okay. So they updated hardware on it, but, and I'm wondering how many of these features that they talked about today are dedicated to just the new one, or are they things that I can do uh, with my current Chromecast as well? Cause they're showing angry guys, angry birds go playing on my TV through my dongle. Well, and, and they it better be backwards compatible because I noticed that the, their app update is all based around. I mean, the app updated, and it's the same app, so it's everything's going to have to be backwards compatible. Mm-hmm. I, I just go back again to there's no interface on the device. It's difficult for a lot of people to use and the only way for me to use it is if i if i have a mobile device sitting around to to kind of kick off the cast process but again this is not for i you know this is not for grandma this is for the already super connected people like you and me but that's it's not really, how they market it are you, how many are people you, how many people went out and and here i'm going to say this because it's so cheap mm-hmm. how many people went out and bought it plugged it into their tv into source 4 and an input four, and have never looked back. Okay, I, I, I think I think they sell a lot of them because they're extremely inexpensive. Mm-hmm. It's like if if I don't, I don't know if if Apple came out and sold a, a five dollar item, everyone would just go pick it up to get it. It looks like we lost AJ here. Apparently, he's so mad at your Chromecast bashing. Uh, Chilla, <laughs> that he just dropped right off of the internet. So uh, it, it means something happened with kids or something. So, uh, but but I I, I think uh, I got to be honest. You know, I have been using my remote and just dealing with the Amazon Fire TV more often. <laughs> I'll be because, completely why? honest with because, you because because it has an OS that that can be navigated via that remote type of device that right. you don't have to. 
go back and unlock the device and jump back to this app and, and do a bunch of stuff. Don't get me wrong. I, the Nexus, I've actually often thought about picking up the Nexus TV device mm-hmm. or like a, an, a, the NVIDIA TV device. Those are much more interesting to me. And I saw that the they dropped their TV at Best Buy down to 50 bucks. I'm actually more interested in the audio. To, so they came out with Chromecast Audio. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm super interested in this device. I can plug this in. I can take one of these and plug it into any speaker in my home on Wi-Fi. And connected yes. to Wi-Fi now, and just just send my Google Music to any speaker. Now, is this a I have a speaker over here and I want it to be on the internet, or is it a I grab a bunch of these and have a bunch of speakers and I put them all? So on it the supports multi-room synchronization. So, it, to me, yes, it's you. You have that option, right? I think you can pick this speaker and just play this out of this speaker and have an audio book being read up in the bedroom and different stuff in your living room. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, I, just because it's a, 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 a hand away. I mean, I have so many of these little Bluetooth speakers mm-hmm. that have also an audio in on them that I can easily throw one of these in every room with one of those. Here's my gripe about the Chromecast audio device. It's $35. That seems a little much for just doing audio. So is the Chromecast. Mm-hmm. So why make this twenty five dollars? I'd go out and buy. I'd go out and buy four of these in an instant. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pick up the Chromecast. That ten dollars is Sorry. the big difference for you. No, I, and I would think so. What? So here's what the difference is. I'm going to go pick up two of these mm-hmm. instead of picking up four. Just to just to get an idea for how well the multi because the it's, for me it's the multi room synchronization. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to kick off music and have it play the same in every and room without installing no. a Sonos system and doing that whole yeah. thing. It's all wireless. It's all you know. It's not expensive hardware. It's this thirty five dollar thing, and you're done. Right. I mean, I can plug these into. I have a couple of receivers in different rooms around the house. I can plug them in with an RCA adapter. I mean, there's, there's optical that supports optical audio. Um, so there's, there's a lot of room for this device. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just not sure why, mm-hmm. like, what did, what did they do? Did they take off the HDMI port and put in the digital? I think that's mostly it. I really think that's mostly audio it. port. And the, you might as well just take in the, the other Chromecast and, and in addition to have an HDMI do, you know, I, I, I think that out. shows you how cheap the parts are for the Chromecast. If it wasn't much of a price difference to also do it for audio. All the, all the, to me, all they did was swap, swap out because the devices are only so big, right? Yeah, all yeah. they did was swap out the, the connectors. Swap out the connectors and the chip that uh, compresses video versus the chip that compresses audio. Which again, wouldn't you think that would be a higher end uh, processor to, to, to do the video because there's more to it. Uh, it's a higher bandwidth. It's a higher bit rate. You know, and and versus audio either way. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it, it's it's interesting. I don't think this will catch on. But I think this is the evolution of the Nexus Q um, and 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 a, a more consumer friendly version of that well and i don't think it's the i don't think it's the next iteration of the the q because no, no. we have we have the nexus player right right it's I'm, getting not, it, they've not, already announced it's getting a marshmallow update not the next version but the next like the evolution like the the like well we boiled down this idea to this not it's a nexus something or other but while well, we had this idea and then you guys all shared the music and you could log in and do this thing and it's all over the wi-fi and it was maybe it's sync or something like that down to well now it's this little thing you know like we, but, but no because the queue the queue had the interface that the nexus player has okay and they keeping the nexus player just came out mm-hmm so I, I don't think it's I think they're on two separate lines like Chrome OS and Android. They're, the the Nexus player has a full UI. It can it has its own remote. You can use Bluetooth um, controller with it. I mean, you, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot you can do there. And I think this is the here's the cheap here's the cheap streamer with with nothing local, nothing nothing, not much to it. Whereas the the Nexus player. It's like the hockey puck looking thing. I think that's the next iteration of the queue. Right, 
Right. Uh, technologically, yeah, I agree with you. So I oh no, okay. So so uh, as far let's 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 hold our VR stuff because I know you want to do something very special with VR in the coming weeks. So let's yes. just there were announcements for Oculus VR, Gear VR, new one coming out this year. Um, let's hold on that. There's new stuff. It doesn't matter. You're not getting until the end of the year or next year or whatever the case may be. Netflix is going to be on there. That's a big whoop about that uh but we're gonna wrap that i think we're just gonna have a larger vr discussion uh when you get in studio and we do that thing uh which i think is going to be in two weeks is that is that correct it'll probably be, it'll probably be next week probably hopefully next microsoft week. won't announce too much stuff all right hopefully microsoft behave yourselves <laughs> and and so we can do vr next week okay well hey you know it still counts minecraft is coming to the oculus or gear vr or something so i don't know i We'll get into that. Uh, I even have a story here about VR in your Marriott Hotel in the UK, stuff like that. Uh, I want to hold this thing about the uh, the cat box uh, for when Katie's on next. Uh, BlackBerry confirms the Priv Android phone will launch this year. I think we've been, we've been talking about well, this. Your in CEO wasn't too sure on how to use it, but yeah, it's going to launch. <laughs> CEO, was it? Is it this year? Year? Didn't their CEO uh, come out and say, "Hey, if this doesn't work with the phones, we have plenty of other uh, aspects to our company that are not doing bad." And so, what for consumer phones? I, I could see them going that route because they just bought a, a company. Good mm. technologies. They, they have enterprise solutions. They're doing yeah, they well. Have a lot I mean, of enterprise solutions. I mean, BlackBerry is not the behemoth in phones that it used to be. But uh, <laughs> crap, I, I'll be crap. honest with you, though. I I hear and I see mm-hmm. a lot of people in the enterprise looking for this device. They mm-hmm. want their keyboard back. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not. It's obviously not the younger generation, but. There are there are plenty of people that want want a, a, a slider keyboard. To Chachi's point, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, it's going to depend on how how long how well does it last? Does it hold up? We'll, only time will tell. Oh, I love this. Is this the article? Did you put this article in here about the CEO struggles to demonstrate the company's new Android? Calls it a Google phone? Or no, I, that was already there, but I did have that in my link okay. link list as well. Nice. I, I couldn't remember if I put that in. Maybe AJ did, unfortunately, since he kind of fell off the internet. Uh, I also, I, I we definitely have to mention. Uh, and again, I'm not into the political side of things of this or anything, but but just that this is a conversation that's happening. But officially, the White House has come out to say the what that broadband is a core utility, just like power and water. And there's similar discussions. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg was in front of the UN talking about how the uh, access to the internet should be a basic human right at this point because it is how the word it, the world is working. Uh, and of course, there's that conversation on whether they should be providing the internet or somebody else in India. Uh, so that's been very interesting. That that, that conversation is going to be in, uh, one to follow, and I think one we're going to want to de- dive in a little deeper here on this show at some point and kind of understand that not so much just for here in america for us that have the fancy new phones that chinese uh child hands made and everything like that but for those developing countries it's going to be so important i think this is a your your next industrial revolution of a sort when it when it comes to these uh for companies that for for countries that have barely even gotten to an industrial revolution they're getting internet uh especially in africa and the middle east you know things like that uh so i, I think that's you have any any thoughts on on this uh, uh these announcements by a uh, white house mark zuckerberg on the un anything like that I think, real quick i think facebook's taking it obviously into their own account i mean that they're very they're a very interested player in this mm-hmm. it would be like if google said i in google fiber i want to own the the channel in which we del- your internet's delivered so right uh, i'm interested to see how, how who else steps up um and and how this affects the cost and net neutrality Right, that, that that will be interesting. It's like great. It's a good message. Hey, the internet doesn't belong to the governments. Uh, stop. Keep your hands off of it. But then again, then what if Facebook takes advantage of that as well, and nobody's there to stop them? So where do we find that kind of um, middle ground on that to make sure we're not uh, not us, you know, as consumers, but uh, the people in India that they're providing free internet for. But it's basically Facebook internet, right? Uh, basically, yeah. like, a, 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 from what I understand, I think it's like an a America Online walled garden kind of thing. Uh, and there's no chance for them to get out of Facebook for the free part, at least. That's the way I understand it. Again, not 
fully researching it. But again, it, it comes up in all the, you know, you two with the podcast. Uh, we, we listen to very similar ones. And those are the news items that we're hearing day to day uh, uh, in the tech sector. So, OK, on that note, I think that's all we can squeeze in here today. A super long one. It, it, we, we got AJ and we have two giant announcements and releases. Uh, you know, those are going to go long whenever we do that. We've done entire shows just on the Apple stuff. So I think I think we behaved ourselves. I think we did well. If you're checking this out on Wednesday, it is International Podcast Day. I know I use the hashtag, hashtag podcast day, but there's a whole other meaning to a bunch of other people. Uh, so please go check out the proceedings there. Uh, follow the hashtag all day and see what other people are doing. Basically, and also check out, I believe it's internationalpodcastday.com. It's Google Podcast Day. You'll find the thing. It used to be National Podcast Day. And uh, we have to, actually have an interview with... Uh, uh, off the top of man, I think his name is Steve Byrne from uh, International Podcast Day. We are tweeting that out and talking with him on Twitter uh, just a week ago about it. And uh, you can find a little bit about the origins of Podcast Day. We'll be tweeting that out as well. Um, retweeting that out as well. And uh, we will be, uh, well, initially we're going to do Evening with PodCamp tomorrow. I'm going to be talking with Buzzy from Epicast. Uh, so a great group, a great podcast network that's that's exploding here in the Pittsburgh area. And I might share a co-working space with them now because I just moved into Work Hard Pittsburgh. And it seems like everybody in there, I, I'm, I feel like I'm the only person not on the Epicast podcast network and I'm in there. Uh, but we'll be having a discussion with him and I'll ask him all the questions I've been meaning to over the years and just haven't, over the months and I just haven't had an opportunity to yet. And uh, also, uh, the, we're actually going to be uh, dusting off the new live rig that uh, the Work Hard pittsburgh has out there uh you may have seen it in action if you checked out civic startup uh weekend pittsburgh that i was talking about a few weeks ago uh or uh maybe the thrival fest on the uh on the last tuesday when they were talking about video games and such you can check all that out on workhardpgh.com's youtube page uh but we'll be dusting that off and there's actually going to be uh several shows epicast is going to do a hangout beforehand uh and uh we're going to do a sorotron media hang out afterwards uh, i think we have books so far john carmen uh who's been on this show and of the former g spot was joining me for the og podcasters panel another og podcaster doug durda from should i drink that.com i think chachi is going to join us if i'm not mistaken and i can't remember if i confirmed anybody else or not uh but uh but no it's going to be fun and we're and uh there's there's another show happening at four o'clock uh the stream should be over on hardware store and i think we're going to also simulcast that on sorgatron media so check out the live.sorgatronmedia.com and we'll have a chat room going over there that i'll be keeping an eye on and uh and and we'll be having some fun tomorrow join us and share podcasts tell tell people about podcasts share the podcast that you're listening to go rate podcasts that you're listening to no matter what they are who they are it helps everybody it's all about spreading uh podcasting man spread the podcast man um so there you go i think on chilla is that all is that all we have to say uh, so we got this weekend in addition to that we got linux ohio linux Fest? Is that what it is? Ohio Linux Fest this weekend. Thank you, thank you. Columbus, yes. Ohio, OhioLinux.com, dot org, dot com, dot com. I used to have it in here. Dot org, uh, dot org. Ohio of course, Linux it's an organization. Org. Yes. Go check them out. We, hey. got, we got that. We got uh, El Capitan as, as uh, we mentioned earlier launches tomorrow, and Microsoft makes their announcement next Tuesday. So I'm sure we'll be covering information from that, much like we did from Google's announcements today. And that should wrap out the major announcements before Christmas. That is right. That is right. So El, El Capitan, and as promised, I need to do this on Periscope or something. But uh, as promised, tomorrow I'm going to be playing uh, El Capitan while I install. El Capitan. So, so you're going to upgrade? You're usually you're usually saying how you need to wait. Uh, I will probably end up upgrading. I need to I need to make sure uh, Wirecast is going to work with it. So other than that, uh, I'll probably upgrade my Mac Mini upstairs and not my laptop right away. I don't know. I'll probably end up pulling the trigger like an idiot. Uh, but <laughs> you know, I, we'll see. I, I I usually try to wait till like the weekend when I'm not in the middle of projects. Uh, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll see and make sure everything's backed up to my Google drive and everything and make sure all this, this fun footage is, is out there and everything. So, uh, so we'll send you off with, uh, some El Capitan. Thank you. Awesome casters for joining us. Thank you to our awesome chat room. That's been hating on our Apple coverage all day and, uh, all night. 
Thank you. You have been our awesome audience. Check it out. Awesomecast.net. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.